Okay, hello everyone, Simon here, and welcome back to our ArcMine 100 series where we are learning about architectural concepts through Minecraft. So we are still in the middle of building the the base of the monument. So um, the transition being the staircase here, which we've barely started. Uh, in between the last video and this one, I spent a little bit over an hour putting the side water things and the staircases in around all the edge. Here you can kind of just see what's going on. I decided to uh, just stick to the contours of the ground as it goes up a little bit. You can see how that works. So, you know, building something this big, sometimes it's a little bit demotivating because it, you, know, you, you feel like there's so much work and it just seems a little bit overwhelming. Like even me, even you know, I, I've built big things in my in my time in Minecraft. And even I get a little bit demotivated just thinking about how much work there is. And that's perfectly natural. That's a perfectly natural feeling. But if you're ever going to build big things, you're going to have to overcome that. And, you know, not succumb to being completely depressed by the rain. So let us continue and just keep pressing, pressing forward. Because this thing is only going to be completed if we uh, continue to finish it, right? So that's actually kind of cool how this thing sticks out towards you. It's like a ship. Like the prow of a ship, except it's on land. So it just kind of plows towards you a little bit. Let me just remove that, because that's not going to be there. Um, Alright, staircase. Staircase. I guess I, I already know kind of what the staircase is going to be like. It's going to be like that. What do we make the, uh, I guess we just stick with the same materials. I don't want to use too many different materials because that would be confusing. A little bit confusing. So let me just, oops, let me just stick with this stone. And, uh, I mean this granite, they call it the granite. I don't think granite really is this color. Never mind. So you're going to stick with this granite. And, uh, build the staircase up here. I guess this means that this will have to have a bit of a border around it, which then is slightly problematic because it doesn't really line up anymore. Uh, that should be fine, I think. So this will come up here, I guess. And then I don't really know what to do at this point. Well, let me just, you know, continue this here. And just follow this orange shape that I've made for myself, because I need this part, at the very least, to... Um, Deliberately block the view of... Or oh, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't need this here. Maybe I only need this on top here. Let me just put this in see what that looks like. As we walk up the stairs, right? So we got this here. So even that, it actually blocks the whole tower without us having to block this view here. You see that? As you walk up there, you kind of see the tower and then it's blocked. I think you can kind of see it a little bit more. But if I put that there, then you can't actually see very much of the tower. So it's kind of block, block there, the view of the tower. You can kind of only see the water in front of you once I put the water in. So we can do that. And then, I guess, this part will be a similar thing with the other stairs, like, you know, that. And then this, let me just um, do the same on this side. So we want that, there, like that. And maybe I don't even want this stuff. 
just want it to be like that, maybe. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Looks fine to me. And then... On this side, I have to be like uh, that. Uh, maybe not that one. And then... Granted under here. Let's see... One, two, three, four. Let's go out to the edge. Four. So it's gonna be like that. That. That can go. And then that can go there. And then the floor here is gonna be granite. So we're still not really designing anything, we're mostly just kind of doing what we've done already. We're going to have to design something up here, because I want to change this a little bit. I have to figure out what I want to do up here. Because there's like a platform up here, but then I don't want to block the, the waterfall too much. But then I want this to be kind of interesting. So I haven't quite figured out what to do at this part yet, so I'm going to remove all of this orange stuff and then... Think about what I'm going to do here. Maybe it's something that matches the... the shape underneath. Or maybe just minimize... minimize the... the amount of platform that's covering up the... Um, the waterfall there, because I want to... because the waterfall is going to be kind of amazing, right? Maybe if it just... But that's not really going to do much. Let me just put some blocks. No, I don't need. I wouldn't need to see this again. I don't need to see the waterfall again. But I just want to make it sure that we don't cover up too much of the the waterfall with stuff. And I think maybe we kind of need columns to hold up that platform too. But it's kind of weird. This is kind of floating like that. So what if we? Um, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Oh, do we need five? So if I, I think we kind of need five. So I'm thinking like we just do this diagonally and then do the same here. Although maybe the path itself should be cobblestone. Because the cobblestone path is the is the standard at the moment. It's only the like the red granite should not be stuff you can walk on. Uh, maybe I'm doing this wrong. Maybe I want this to be actually cobble. The part that you walk on. That's better. Yeah. Okay. That's better. So that gives you a, a clear differentiation between what you can walk on, what you not supposed to walk on. Alright, that's better. We'll just change my mind a little bit and do that. Which means that all of this needs to be... Well, this then makes this slightly uh, easier to manage because it's going to be cobbled there, granite there, and then if we figure out how wide this path needs to be, it needs to be at least that wide, I guess? It still makes for a very narrow path. I wonder if I don't want to make it one block wider. Probably do. Yeah, I probably want to do a four blocks there. So let's go one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then from this side, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and it joins up there, right? And then, uh, and then, I suppose we just turn back in here, and then we just continue this here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 1, 2, 3, 
four diagonal this back until we get to that point and then three and then this of course would do that except this is not going to be closed off because we're going to have to make this symmetrical on the other side in the meantime let me put that there and then let me put that there and then let me put a little bit of boundary around here and then I don't really want people walking back here do I? No, this can just go straight across like that and then we get to there need some torches up here to figure out the lighting later on uh, and then, let me just go to the other side so we want 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then like that, right? Yep. 1, 2, 3, 4, until we get to there and then it's just three so like that I think or did I do that completely wrong I feel like I did that wrong oh I did that wrong because that's actually one block forward from there so uh, let me change this that's wrong um that's meant to be that is stone for some reason. And then one, two, three, two, three, four, and then that. That's what it's supposed to be. So the path is just going to be like that. Nothing too, uh, too fancy there. And also, we're going to just minimize how much we cover up this water bit here because the water looks better, you know, in the light, not in the shadow. So we try and keep that open to the sky as much as we can and have just minimal paths going to the base of the tower. Let me just drop some granite around here. And then... I guess this should be oops this should be granite. Ah uh, right. That should be granite. Just uh, put some torches in for lighting. So that's gonna be uh, time set day. So it's going to be water down here and then that is actually going to frame the tower so that's going to form like, an, like a U shape and then the tower is going to stick up the middle there so it's going to like, it's going to like be a bracket underneath the, the tower so the shape of it actually complements the shape of the tower that's going to be there so that's really cool, I like that, I really do like that And I think that's pretty much it for the staircase. Uh, Alright, well, let me build it on the other side if I can figure this out and how this works. Maybe I should build it down to the top because the top is fairly easy to, uh, to figure out. So this comes around to there with granite around here and then this comes around like that unnecessarily complicated staircase and the whole point of it is just to create interesting shapes the 
whole point is just to create interesting shapes and to manipulate how people see the uh, the tower. Manipulate from what angle they can and cannot see the tower, which is uh, like a, it seems like an extraordinary amount of of work just to put in just to you know make things look a little more a little more dramatic but that's the whole point of theatrics right because we did talk about theatrics and the whole point of this is theatrics is how do we create a situation where people see your monument in a more interesting way and that really is is all we're doing here no, actually, that's supposed to be stairs. Should the underside of the stairs be granite? Yes, it should. Yes, it should. Alright, so now we have... How many steps down? Let me just count here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So there's one, two, and then three, and then four, and then just come around and then five. So from this point, we go like one, two, three. Is there a gap between the staircase and the uh, next one? There, there is, alright. There's a gap there. And then one, two. This is not right. Wait a minute. Is that just. Oh, it's the other side, wow. <laughs> Alright, it's the other side. My bad. My bad. Alright, it's this side. That makes more sense. What is even going on right now? Alright, so one... And then... Two... Three... Four and five, and that obviously should be closed off. And then what happens underneath the other side? Uh, it just floats above it a little bit. All right, that's fine. Okay, so there's going to be that, and then on the other side, it's going to be that as well. And that just floats above the latch, and then this comes around here. Like that, and... Like that. Uh... Okay, now, what do we do about this? There's going to be a block on that side, three blocks there, and then straight across. So up to here, up to that level, and then straight across here. Now this staircase is symmetrical, which is awesome. So you kind of come around here, you know, you see the tower above you, but then once you get to here, your attention is then focused on the, the water flowing down. And as you turn around here, you just see the water flowing down and you go out again. And then you see the tower again. So we just hide the tower just for a little while from your line of view. 
Uh, this is supposed to be like that, right? In fact, it should even be two blocks there. Okay, I believe that is the staircase pretty much done. Oh, wait a minute, there's still this bit. Let me put this in place. I actually think that this might be better off one block further this way. Possibly. Alright, so there's that. Now for the water down here, which I don't really know what to do about. Um, I suppose uh, we should uh, we should have like a little garden thing down here, I feel like. But how? But how? Okay, so as I was saying, I want... I mean... I mean, the path has to... come across... So let's say, let's say this road goes to there. And then, from this point... I'm just wondering if I should, you know, make the path go... like... here... and then... oops... and then like around to here... in which, ca in which case it will be very close to the building here, but they'll leave more room for something fancy here. Or the alternative is we put the path right next to the edge of this little pond here, in which case that will be tight, but then it leaves room for us to do something here. And so here we'll, we'll do that and then come around or we'll come here and then come around. I actually think I want it closer to I want it closer to the uh, to the edge of the fountain here because like this, if you imagine get rid of the grass, we want people to be kind of closer to the water and further away from the buildings, I think. Because, you know, this... this view here... I think is more suitable than... this view here, which is like... what, what, are, what are we looking at here? So we, we want to kind of move away from the other buildings, is what I mean, and kind of just begin to immerse ourselves into this waterfall and this fancy staircase. So let's push the the people closer to closer to the water. So it's gonna be like that. And then I guess let me just uh, convert this bottom bit into a fountain because it's gonna have to yeah like do that and that and that should also be the gravel. Not the gravel, the granite. Let's just turn the bottom of this, and just we just leave one block at the bottom for the water to, to just disappear into, because this is consistent with all the other water bits, you know, on the other sides of the of the uh, of the monument base. Is that the water just kind of disappears into the ground immediately? That there's there's no pool. 
there's no pond or anything. So let's keep that consistent here. Have the water disappear right at the bottom of the of the waterfall. Like that. And then have a granite boundary as is consistent with the rest of the project so far. And then do that. Seems reasonable to me. Alright, so that's that. And I think now we can actually put the water in because there's nothing else we're going to change with the waterfall bit. I'm pretty sure there's nothing we're going to change. I'm just going to turn this also into granite. Just because the stone is a little bit odd. Okay, so let's put the water in. With great ceremony and anticipation, we are going to fill this fancy fountain with water and see what it looks like. Of course, we need to put water at the bottom bits too because water in Minecraft is a little bit strange. Um, Alright, we got up to there. So now we have to put water down... Yeah. Like that. And I guess we should put water there. Fill that in. Like the water can flow backwards, it's so weird. Anyway, it's just stuff you have to keep in mind if you do water in Minecraft. Look at that! Amazing! It's like a blue pyramid sticking out. It's pretty good. Pretty awesome. Just drop water underneath here. Drop water at that point. Which gives us mostly what we want. I guess I'll drop water in there. And drop water along there, like that. And that gives us pretty much what we want with this fountain thing. Amazing! It's like it's like a, a, a giant kind of water vehicle or thing. Like the shape of it is like a like a train or something, right? It's kind of shoveling a walk towards you. But it's a waterfall. Cool. Awesome. And again, the shape of it echoes the uh, the tower above, because the tower is going to be like the Eiffel Tower. I'm sure you know what the Eiffel Tower looks like. It's going to curve up on either side, and this kind of curves up on either side as well. So the shape of it echoes each other. The, the fountain, the staircase, the tower, everything echoes each other. So that's kind of cool. Alright, so here, we need to have a path that is four blocks wide, right? And then to three, and then over here, and then we turn into the staircase. So we do that. This is simple enough once you are decided where the path goes. And then I guess this also means that we will have to do a boundary there. Now the question is, what do we do with this space? Do I just put grass and trees? Flowers? Rebuild the hill? Because we did demolish a little bit of a hill here. What do we do with this space? Something formal, something naturalistic, grass? I don't know. I honestly don't know what to do with this space here. I might just think about it and come back later. We need to do lighting. I might just come back to this at the very end because I really can't think of a good idea right now. 
for what we might do here and here. Alright, so we're gonna, we're gonna leave that and come back at the end. Because I honestly don't know. Just put this stuff in. Uh, yeah, let's just put the path in. And then put in the granite border. I think I want a few trees at the at the top, at at the uh, you know at the um, monument base. Maybe you know at the top of each fountain on the sides, I'll put a tree. Not sure if there's actually enough space to do that. Um, change my mind. This is gonna be going to block. Keep that consistent there. All right, so we need to do the top of the fountain base. I mean, not the fountain base, the uh, the tower base, and then lighting, and then figure out that bit, and that'll be that. All right, so let me try the trees thing. What I'm thinking is Actually I don't know how much of this I want to dedicate to trees. Three blocks? Because if it's three blocks. And then put a border around the tree as well. And then cobblestone the rest. That might be the thing to do. Can I fit like two trees in here? Or should I just put one in here? I can't fit two trees in here, I don't think. Let me go birch. I think birch are more reliable trees than the oaks. Like the shape of them are more consistent. So I guess birch there. Alright, so let's put some trees in. One, two, three. One, two, three. Maybe here I can have two trees. Although if I put two trees here, then it's not gonna be right at the corner. Let's stick with the one tree. See how consistent the birch is. That's kind of good. Consistent trees are more predictable. And that's gonna close. So then, the cobblestone, I guess, will go all the way up to the base of the tower. Which, that's fine. That's good. I like that. That's good. All right. Let's let's continue with this. Again, I'm, I I feel like sometimes I just make decisions because I imagine in my mind what it would look like, and then I say good enough. And then maybe I'm not really explaining myself. What I'm thinking is so I'm gonna. Th I'm thinking, if you're down here, the tower is gonna start here and then go all the way up there. The trees are gonna be here, so you're gonna walk on this side and have the tower like there. And then as you're coming up these things, if you ever come up these things for some reason, you see the tower framed by the trees, which I think is good. Again, I'm just kind of imagining what it looks like in my mind. So you know what you imagine and what I imagine might be slightly different. And you're never gonna know until you actually build the thing exactly how it's gonna turn out because we're not, you know, drawing this as we go or, you know, designing it properly. So nobody knows really how it's gonna turn out at this point. We can always change this stuff later on if we have to. I don't think we have to. The thing is, the, the better you are at visualizing your concepts, the less you're going to have to change in later on to uh, to fix things. 
but that comes with practice. So the more you design, the, the better you get at visualizing, because you do it, like you know, the more you do it, the more familiar you become with how to do it well. Because I mean, the, the more shapes you see, for example, the more you are able to visualize shapes accurately. And the more combinations of shapes you see, the more you're able to visualize them accurately. So it comes with practice. So when I say things like, oh, that, that's going to look good, and you have no idea what it's going to look like, well, that's just something that, you know, if, if you if you practice, then, then you'll be, get, you'll be better at, at, you know, predicting how things will look in the future. So don't worry about it if it seems like I'm just making these decisions so easily or so quickly and then not really um, explaining myself much. Don't worry too much if that seems a little bit um, impossible to you, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, when somebody rides a unicycle and just you have no idea how, they, how they're balancing on that unicycle. Or someone is juggling and you can't juggle and you're like, how, how does he keep like five balls in the air at the same time? So, you know, again, like the, the more you practice, the, the easier it gets. And if you just kind of don't understand how somebody does it because you've never done it before, then don't worry too much about it. Once you practice and try it out, you figure it out. And there's no, it's not, it's not really about talent. It really is about practice. Like nobody has a talent for riding a unicycle. Nobody is born with the ability to ride with a, ride a unicycle. It's just practice. So don't think that oh that guy is so creative, he must be talented. No, it's practice. You can you can do it too. You just have to, just have to um, keep learning and keep trying and just keep experimenting. And eventually you get better. If you're colorblind, then that's an issue. Then that's a that's a talent issue. <laughs> if you literally physically can't see colors, then maybe that's a talent issue. But you know, those are extreme cases. Most things you can just practice. They say that Beethoven was almost completely deaf, and he he wrote symphonies. Like the story was that Beethoven had to. Press like he had to kind of press his ear against the floor to hear the music, because he couldn't kind of hear things. So he was kind of deaf. But the thing was, he made these symphonies that were really loud because of it. <laughs> if you think of the Fifth Symphony, so but like, because he's deaf, he, he kind of he likes loud music, and so then he kind of makes these really dramatic symphonies, which is pretty awesome, you know. Turning around the uh, the disability into something that is artistically interesting. All right. So how long is this gonna? We're almost there. Just need to. that and then I want to change all this to cobble as well at least here I want to change the cobble I guess back here it will, I have to figure that out after I build the tower uh, you can't really see it during the day we need more lights I think I'll just use glowstone it's not that imaginative but I think at this point ground lighting is actually it's actually, uh, um, it actually makes sense. In most cases, ground lighting doesn't actually make sense because one, you have lights in the ground, which doesn't usually happen. And two, if you bury lights in the ground, all the lights point up. So you're, you're lighting the air. You're not really lighting the, the surfaces that you walk on. You know, if you have you know, a light on a pole and the light shines downwards, then you're lighting the ground but if you have a, put a light in the ground and it points up then you're lighting the sky you see that it doesn't matter in minecraft in minecraft the light just kind of spills out in all directions no matter where you put it 
But in the real world, if you kind of put lights in the ground, you're literally pointing lights up into the sky, which is kind of weird because it doesn't do anything useful. It just, you know, you're pointing it up into the night sky. And it also creates a lot of light pollution, which is, you know, when you uh, make the night sky glow too much and it, you, know, you can't see the stars anymore. Um, but here it's kind of justified because there's going to be a tower up there. So if you point light upwards, you're kind of lighting the tower. So in this case, it, it might be justified. In most cases, lights of lights in the ground pointing up is just weird and uh, probably a waste of time and a waste of money. Don't really want to do that. Sometimes you do it indoors because you have something on the ceiling that you want to light up. That can happen. Alright, where would I put the lights? We're almost all the way around. Where would I put the lights? We can't put it in the grass. I don't think I want to interrupt the... Uh, I don't think I want to interrupt the, the borders, the borders of the granite. So the granite lines I don't think I want to interrupt. Which means I have to put it in the grass? Possibly in the waterfalls. Maybe I'll do that. Like under the water. And like in the corners in the grass maybe. Maybe finish planting these trees and then just see how that looks. I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good. You'll notice there's not a lot of interesting things in the monument place. I mean, there's the fountain, that's the most interesting part. But all the rest of it, you see, it's just a, a, a regular pattern of trees and waterfalls and staircases. And so you don't really need to look very much to understand it. Like you just kind of you just see it and then you understand the whole thing. And that is that is kind of deliberate. Like I'm not, I'm, delib I'm deliberately not making this complicated because the focal point, remember, is going to be the tower itself. So the border you draw around the tower should be relatively simple. Otherwise, you take the attention away from the tower. Imagine if, you know, if the if the base of the monument is more interesting than the monument itself, then nobody's going to look at the monument, right? So the point here is not to create a really really fancy monument foundation, but just to create a border, literally just draw a border around it and not have it too interesting. Because you don't want to, you know, take attention away from the tower itself. So that's also important to keep in mind here. Alright, so the last tree is going to be here. Then we need to figure out lighting, which I guess we're going to have some really conventional lighting in the uh, in the staircase. Or maybe we don't. Hmm. Let me think about this. Let me put that there. Put that there. Alright, that's good. So the trees just, again, form a little border at the base. Nothing too fancy. And then, glowstone. It's gonna be a lot of glowstone, isn't it? It's gonna be glowstone around every single tree. Gotta get rid of these. Glowstone under every tree. 
Do I want to close? Let me throw them in the corner as well. Just for good measure. And then I think glowstone at the uh, in the middle or at the edges, probably at the edges of the waterfall. So the light will spill out of the waterfall to light the staircases around the side. And we can get rid of this. There's no, I mean, I've said earlier that the, the lighting in Minecraft is very unrealistic. So the kind of lighting you would do in Minecraft doesn't really teach you very much about how you do lighting in real life. And that's a bit of a shame because lighting is actually really interesting in real life. And there's really nothing you can do in Minecraft to, to, uh, to simulate or recreate that. So as you, as you do lighting in Minecraft, just kind of keep in mind again that you're not really learning anything useful about real life lighting, which is really unfortunate. I mean, it'll be good if you actually. Oh, wait a minute, there's a missing boundary. It'd be really good if there were things like, you know, spotlights and, uh,. Variable strength lighting, so you can kind of increase the brightness or dimness, or you know, reduce the brightness and stuff like that. Directional lighting, maybe even colored lighting, that would be amazing if there was colored lighting. So there'd be a lot of glowstone. Let me go time set night. Yeah, there'll be like lights underneath all the trees. So you don't really see where the light's coming from because it's literally in the ground. Um, alright, so we're gonna put glowstone under the water. Which is interesting. Uh, do I actually want that? Maybe I don't. Maybe I want the glowstone underneath the stairs. Because I don't want to see it here. But if we put it not there, but there, that's better. Oops. Um, so you don't really see it as much. I think I like that better. There's a little bit of light, but you don't really see it quite as much. So it's going to have to go there, 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 and there. It's kind of amazing. It is actually... oh crap. It's the wrong place. Now I've messed this up. <laughs> Oops. Let me just... Uh, Get rid of some of this, and then uh, put the water back, so I don't mess up the shape of the water. There you go. Yeah, the water, <laughs> the water is my Minecraft is not very realistic, and yeah, it can actually change the shape of water, which is odd and not realistic. One more thing to keep in mind as you design in Minecraft. The water doesn't do what you'd expect it to do. What is that? Oh, it's like a pool of lava over there. Ah, I did it again. Let me um, block that off. Block that. No, block that off. Right, and then put that back. 
All right. It's so interesting. So the yeah, so the light underneath the waterfalls makes the whole thing glow just a little bit, but it's not really clear where the light is coming. So you know, despite me saying, well, the light is not realistic in Minecraft, I mean, you can, you can still do some very interesting things, like the indirect lighting here, where you're making the whole thing glow just a little bit, but it's not obvious where the light is coming from. So you know, there's dark there, and there's just a glow. The whole thing is just glowing. Of course, you know, and we know where the, the glowstone is. It's back here, but the indirect lighting, kind of hidden around the corner makes it glow without any obvious light source. And that's something you might do in architecture as well, in real life architecture. Because the thing with, with real life lights is that there's glare because the uh, the lights themselves are so bright that the, the if you kind of put a light in people's within people's field of view if they can kind of actually see the light, then the glare of it will prevent them from seeing other things clearly. So then what you do is you have indirect lighting, where the light itself is behind other things, but it reflects outwards. So then the, so then the, the room kind of glows a little bit, but there's no direct lighting, so then there's no glare but there's still this kind of glow in the space, like like this, basically like this. Except, of course, glare in real life is a lot stronger than it is in Minecraft. Like you think you can stare at a at a torch and not see any glare at all, whereas in real life you can't do that. So, yeah, so there are things you can learn about lighting. But maybe only if you really understand how things work in real life already, you can manipulate light in Minecraft to, to do those things. And of course the soft glow, you know, at the sides, again, you know, the, the center is more brightly lit than the sides, so even though you can see what's going on in the sides, your eyes are drawn towards the most brightly lit parts, and so it doesn't take people's attention away from the main tower. Again, we are muting the lights at the sides, so, ah, oh, crap, so that you can see what's going on, kind of, ah, uh, you can kind of see what's going on, but not have these lights completely overwhelm the main feature, which is of course the tower at the top. Alright, let's put that back. Almost done, although we need to figure out how to put the lighting in the main fountain. I haven't quite decided. I think for that one we're not going to have lighting underneath the water at all. We're going to have lighting next to the staircase, I think. Let me get rid of this torch. That's not supposed to be there. Nor is that supposed to... oops. Alright, more glowstone, more glowstone, more glowstone. As you do a massive project like this, the amount of time you spend you spend designing versus the amount of time you spend building, it becomes less favorable in the sense that like if you design a small thing. It's very quick to build, so you, you almost spend as much time designing as you do building. 
Whereas the bigger it is, and the more and the more modular it is, or you know, as you know, in this case, the more rigid your pattern is, the more time you spend building and the less time you spend designing because you're just designing once. Like I designed one waterfall and one staircase, and I had to spend hours copying that thing all around. So as you build build bigger buildings, you you spend proportionately less time designing and more time building. And that's why big buildings are not fun to to design. That's why they're not as interesting for a person who just wants to play Minecraft and, and, and think about design. It's because it becomes very repetitive and very uh very dull, literally. Literally just kind of boring. As you're just kind of doing the same thing over and over again to fill in the design that you've already made once. So that's the uh, that's the thing I want you guys to learn. I mean that's partly why I made this exercise of monumentality. That's partly the reason why I'm you know I'm giving you the exercise to build a big thing because this is what it's like to build a big thing. So just just so you know. The bigger it is, the less time you spend designing and the more time you spend just figuring it out. I guess I want lights here as well for consistency. Except at this point, I don't know what happens after that. Put that there and that there. And then... Um well do I want lights down here? I think I do. Just like that. Not that anyone would really see that, but it might be important. Alright, similar thing back here. If I can see what's going on down here. And then similar things here. Did I have that? No, I didn't. I didn't have that. And just a little bit here. Alright, now what? Now what? Now we need lighting along the path, which... Let's get rid of this. Which I guess we're going to go back to the old lighting on the stick. Um, alright. So, that. Let's see, we need... One, two, three, four, and light. Is that too tall? I don't know. I don't know if that's too tall or not. One, two, three, four, and light. Do I really want to do that? Maybe I don't. Maybe what I want is actually to hide the lighting again. Hide the glowstone. In like these places. So you don't really see them on the path. But again, it's going to glow just a little bit. The whole thing is just going to glow. Um, except it doesn't really leave us enough light here. Maybe if I put a block glowstone like there. Maybe? Maybe a block of glowstone there and there, I don't know. 
How much light is that? Time set night. Not very much light, but kind of enough. It's actually kind of enough. It's pretty dark there, isn't it? Put a block a little closer over there, would be really obvious, wouldn't it? Yeah, put it there instead. I right, just put a little bit close to there. So again, we're kind of hiding the light a little bit. It's not that well hidden, but oh, wait a minute, that we don't really want that, do we? No. Um, we don't want this. That's embarrassing. All right, let's just get rid of those at the sides because it's on the outside. Oops, get rid of those. Did I mess up the water in here? I think I did. Yes, I did. Damn it. How can I... Let me just block that off. And then block that off. And then unblock that off. And then let that back. Okay, that's better. Uh, wait a minute. Didn't I say to... Oh, wait, I can do this. Now, this can be glowstone, because that's actually underground. Isn't it? Alright, so there's one block of it that's underground. The other stuff has to go... So there's still one block in here, right? Yes, there is. Alright, that's fine. That's fine. So that's more than enough light in there. Now for... The final bit, I still haven't decided what to do there. Maybe a few birch trees. Almost done. Almost done. Let me just uh, cobblestone the top of this as well. It's not bad, is it? It's pretty good, actually. Alright, we still need to cobblestone the top of this because we don't want to keep the path consistent. So remember how we put in all this stone at first? By the end of it, we've just replaced all of it again with different blocks. So all the stone that we placed here was completely redundant. <laughs> Maybe I should have made it out of cobblestone, but even then I would have had to replace most of it. You know, with the grass and the, and the granite and the waterfall and all that. Oh well. That's design, that's architecture. And really, if your design doesn't change very much, then you're not designing right. Because design is all about changing your, your, your mind. I mean, if, if you can't improve without changing. Let me put it that way. Right? You can't, you can't improve something without changing it. So, if your first concept is the same as your final outcome. You have not improved your work. That's not good design, that's bad design. Because you didn't actually make it any better than what you first came up with. So, good design generally requires the concept to have changed over time. And that's a, that's a mistake that I guess beginners will make because they don't know how to improve their ideas. Like, they have an idea, they they kind of make it, and then they stare at it, and they think, ah, it's, it's okay, you know, it's, it looks pretty good, I um, mean, it's an okay thing. But they don't know how to improve it. And how you improve it is you have to ask yourself the tough questions. You have to ask yourself, does this do exactly what I wanted to do? And is there no other way for me to do it better? Like if you're designing a chair, like kind of you make a chair and then you have to say, well, can I use different materials? Well, would that be more interesting when you use different materials? Can I make it a different shape? Like if I sit on it, is it comfortable? If I make it a different shape, would it be more comfortable? And so the, the way you design is you have to try different things. I try a lot of different things. And then, you know, and then, and then question yourself, like, is this really good? And, or can I make this better? Like, I guess the only example I really gave is back in the uh, the color exercise with the residences. 
I tried out different things because we had four apartments and I tried out four different designs. So for this time, I haven't really been designing properly because I've only been doing like the thing that comes to mind and then just building it and then and then leaving it. Of course, you know, I'm I'm I've put a lot of exercises in. There's like eleven exercises, so that's a lot of opportunities for you to try out different things. But really, you should do all of that for one design, like each one exercise. If you're doing it properly, you should have multiple concepts, and then also development as well. Like you should be able to kind of go back and see what you tried at first, and how that has been improved over time. And that's that's good design. I mean, if you're if you can improve your idea, then you'll always end up with good ideas. The thing about ideas is you don't you don't necessarily need a good idea at the start, but you need to know how to improve ideas, because if you can improve ideas, then you'll always have a good idea by the end of it, because you're improving it over time. So your initial idea, whether that's good or bad, is kind of irrelevant because the process of improving your idea will make you end up with a good idea, no matter where you, whether you started off with a good idea or a bad idea. You'll fix it along the way, and that's the process. So that's the philosophy of design. And I guess throughout these exercises, I've tried out different things, not on a large scale, but you know, I'll try out different options here and there now, try things out, testing, see how they look. So I do do it a little bit. But um, really, you can do it as much as you like, and again, it's, it's a matter of how much time you have to actually try out the th different options. If you want to spend, you know, 10 times as much time on it, you can just try out 10 other options. And, you know, the more options you try, the more likely that is it is that you'll come up with one that's actually really good. I mean, if you try two ideas, then you have the best of those two. If you try 20 ideas, then you have the best of 20. I mean, what's, what's more likely to be awesome? Obviously, the more you try, the more likely that you find a better design than if you just try a few designs, because you have more to choose from. And that's the philosophy of design. That's the process of, of design. Some people think creativity is just something you have, you know, good ideas is just something you have. That's not it at all. That is not design at all. You don't just have a good idea and then and then everything happens afterwards. No, you you try a lot of different things. Like a scientist, you experiment. You make a lot of experiments. The more experiments you do, the more you learn. And the more able you are to, or the more likely it is that you'll come up with an interesting invention. Just like a scientist, just like an inventor, art is not not really about inspiration. I mean, obviously, inspiration is useful and, and you know, quite important, but it's not the inspiration, but what you do with the inspiration and how you improve it over time. That's really uh, the key to to good outcomes and you know, reliably good outcomes. Because if you, if you can take bad ideas and, and figure them out and turn them into good ideas, you always have good ideas. Because <laughs> even your bad ideas you can turn into good ideas just by experimenting and changing it and improving it and polishing it until it works. And that's always a better strategy. People who only rely on inspiration is actually they're at a disadvantage if they only rely on inspiration. I mean, if they have inspiration and they can design, the pro like they can still do the process of design and do the process of improvement, then of course they're really they have a really great advantage. But just having inspiration by itself and not going through the process is actually a disadvantage because it's not reliable. Alright, so all of this has to be cobblestone. It's gonna take a while. Let's see what it looks like underneath here. You know, look at all this empty space. Alright. Let's fill all of that in. And I still
still haven't decided what to do in front of the staircase at the bottom. Still haven't decided. Well, I just talked about it. Inspiration is not really the important thing. The important thing is to try out different options and see what happens and make improvements. So maybe I just need to do exactly what I told you guys. It's just try things out and see. Because inspiration has actually failed me at this point. Can't think of anything off the top of my head as to what to do there. So I was thinking about maybe plants, maybe a fountain. Let's just try it. Let's just try it. Let's just try a fountain. And then we'll try some plants. And then we'll see which one we like better. Because there are there's two sides of it, right? So I can, I can just kind of try out both options. That horse is going to be so sad when it finds out that it's going to be stuck in here. What other options can we have? We can have fountain, we can have like a some plants, we can have like a a wall. We can have a uh, I don't know, let's just try fountains and plants. Let's not think of too many things. Plants and trees, I imagine, might do a good job of hiding the the houses behind. Although a fountain can do a similar thing, can't it? Hmm. All right, are we done? Are we? Uh, no. Are we? Are we done? Are we? Are we? Are we done? All right, we're done up here. Alright, good. I like it. I do like it. Most of it is pretty basic, as, as we said, but um, that's okay because we don't want to take away from the interest of the monument itself. The staircase is quite interesting, the shape of it. Very, very interesting. Unnecessarily complicated, but interesting. Yes, I like I like the framing, I like the bracketing, I like the echo of the shapes. I like it. Okay, good. Um, plants and fountain, because I'm thinking. Let's do plants and maybe just flatten this out first of all. So if we do. I kind of like plants, so I just kind of make a hill. I think I'll just make a hill if I do that. Make a hill and then put some trees there, which... I don't know. Might be good. Who knows? You don't know until you try. Imagine we just make a small hill, nothing too big. Come on, come on, stop doing that. All right, so let's make a small hill. And then, I don't know, plant some trees. Maybe we want a tree closer to here. There, plant some trees, and then, uh, oops, let me get rid of the fence. Plant some trees, plant some grass. So pretend it's like a 
it's like a hill that's already here, but what we're really doing is blocking off the house back here a little bit, so you don't see as much of it. So it, ap it appears naturalistic. Right? I mean, it's not that it's not that amazing, so we pretend that it's not really a, a built thing. Hmm. Or, alternatively, we build a fountain the same way we've built the other fountain. And I guess that means we have to come all the way back to here. Let me get rid of all of that. So the alternative is to build a fountain which would uh, be this shape. Kind of. And then I guess it would step up the same way the other fountains have up until now. Right, like that. And this has to be filled in. I think the problem here is that this might actually block the house behind. Maybe that's not a problem, maybe that was the whole point anyway. And I found it does that there, and then... That there... And then how tall do we actually want to make this? And is that even... Correct? No, because that needs to be like there. And this needs to be like there, because the water comes out the other way, that's gonna be like that. Maybe we just put all the fountain all the way to the top? Or you know, as far as the diagonal goes. Okay, that does that, that does... This is not going to work like that. Let me just remove that. Cut this back a little bit. Do that. Alright, that's, that's probably going to make more sense. And then that's going to do this. Like that. And then, uh, I guess, we have this. Is that going to be the top? Because the top is like two squares back, right? No, the top is only one square back. Alright, never mind. One more square to the top. And then that's the top there, like that. And then maybe even glowstone through here, underneath the water. as is the pattern with the other waterfalls so far. And straight across. That's awkward. That's really awkward. It's too thin. That's too thin there. It's like, where is the water even coming from? And the water's like on both sides. I don't think I like it, surprisingly. Yeah, no I don't, because... Because here, it's obvious, if you look at this, it's obvious that the interesting stuff is on your left. The interesting stuff is here. That's obvious. Whereas here, it's not obvious that the interesting stuff is is this side, because this is equally interesting as that, and that's just the same thing. There's water there and water there. So it's the same thing. So it's like... 
you feel like something interesting should be there, but there isn't. It's just dirt. So, I think I prefer this because this just looks like oh, it's just it's just kind of wilderness. It's nothing. And the the amazing thing is here. Uh, this actually takes the focus away from what we want the focus to be on, which is that. And it kind of draws the attention away to this side. Doesn't it? It does. Yeah, okay. Well, that's decided. We are going to do just grass and trees. And even though that's kind of really uh, not interesting, it is in fact the whole point is to make it not interesting. Although we do need some lights down here, so let me... Um, Try to figure out where to put a few lights. Those things are really close together. Let me put a light like one, two, three, four, and light. And then uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. No, maybe I want it to be um, one block this way. One, two, three, four. Just push this over by one block. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And right there. Right there. Right there, there you go. Now we have a light. Yes, yes, so now that, that's very clear that that is a thing, and this is not a thing, so you should look this way. Whereas here, it's like, that's a thing, and that's a thing, so where am I looking? Alright, well, that's decided. See, that's how you test. That's how you test. I had two ideas, one of them turned out better than the other, so how do you know? How do you know? You know by testing, and that actually is design. That actually is creativity. Or rather, you know, you, you have unreliable creativity. <laughs> you know, you have two ideas and, you, and either one could be good. So how do you know? How do you know which one is good? By testing. By just trying it out. And now we know because we tried it out. And that is the secret to consistently good design. I think I want more of this to be uh, dirt. Is there a hole back there? There was. Alright, let me just have more of this as dirt. In fact, probably um, that as well. Then we have to cut all of this back. Don't want any of this anymore. So we want just a small hill here, but because there's a hill on that side already, we're gonna have to um, make sure it merges in with the other one. So let me remove the grass all down here. And you can't see a thing because it's really dark at night. And then we have to kind of put grass in there. And then we have to kind of merge this together like that. And then have to put grass in here. Oh, wait a minute, it's gonna be another block higher. Alright, let's just put the grass there. Put that in a little bit more. that in a little bit more grass like that. Yeah, that's good. And then grass on top. So, like um, something along those lines. Maybe a bit more there, a bit less there, a bit more there, a bit less there. And then uh, merge this hill 
into this patch of grass, kind of like that will do. That's good enough. And then three trees, maybe like there, there, and there. Yeah, alright, yep, three trees are there. And then, grass and things. More grass and things up to here, great. Uh, let me just drop some of that there. More grass and things. And then lights, which is gonna be there. And then one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Two, three, four lights. Two, three, four lights. Now, how does that look? That, as we said, is fine. That is fine! Because trees and things, and very obviously not trees and things. Obviously, water and staircase and granite. So that maintains the uniqueness of the massive waterfall and fancy staircase and does not distract or take attention away from the monument. And I believe that ends this exercise, exercise 9, which is to build a transition between the city and the monument. The monument itself we haven't even started, but it's going to be there. But we have now set up this really elaborate entrance to the monument itself, right? So this experience of kind of coming up the stairs and seeing the tower a little bit behind there and then having a block from you again as you come around here and then coming around and seeing the whole thing again. So you see the whole thing from the bottom framed by this shape here and then you, you come up here and you see parts of it and you come all the way up here and you see the whole thing again. So this kind of showing, this hiding and revealing and making you see different aspects of it at different times so that you can kind of get more views so that, you know, as you walk up towards the monument, you don't just see the same thing the whole time. You actually see different things as you come in to make the approach more interesting, more varied, and... I don't know if it's more dramatic, but at least it's more interesting, all right? <laughs> I'm telling you a more interesting story than just having you walk straight towards the monument and that's it. All right, so that ends the the exercise here, and the entire tower base is ready for us to build a, build a monument in the next exercise. This is pretty awesome. <laughs> this is massive and awesome, and this fountain is also quite dramatic. Alright, our city is almost done, guys. One more exercise, or two more exercises, but one more major exercise, and then it'll be it. So look at that, so as you kind of come in here, come down the street, the whole thing is just kind of framed. Framed by the houses, framed by the the waterfall, framed by the, the staircase. Everything just frames for you, look at that, everything just lines up. And then you get a break from it. And you get glimpses of it as you climb up. And you get up here and you get the whole thing. Alright, great, done. Excellent, I like it. I like this. Uh, how this turned out. In the next video, we're going to have the 10th lecture, which is about monumentality. And that, basically, is just going to be us looking at pictures of monuments and uh, being inspired by all the fancy buildings. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.